All right, we're back and we're in my work test kitchen, Kilcoy Global Foods, and I wanna answer the questions I get asked all the time is how to cook the perfect steak. Now I wanna start by making the caveat that there's no perfect way, there's lots of different ways. If you've got a technique that you think works well, then please leave it in the comments below because we'd love to hear about it. So today we're gonna to run you through a pan-seared Ebony Angus sirloin. This has been dry-aged, but it's a bit darker than normal. We're gonna do a grilled Carrara Wagyu ribeye, and we're gonna do a reverse sear on one of these blue diamond tomahawks. Now these uh, methods are all kind of interchangeable. You can use them for different cuts. Some work better than others. Like I think reverse searing only really makes sense in big cuts, but we'll talk through that soon. Let's get stuck in. Before we cook anything, we need to talk about temperatures, the most important thing. So rare, got 105F40C, medium rare, 15F46C, medium 125F52C, medium well 135F57, and if someone wants it well done, it's 160 or 71C. So this is the temperature that you pull it off the heat source and let it rest. Also the same with reverse searing, but we'll get into the, the kind of nuances with that later on but you need one of these. I bang on about this all this time. You know, people that say, oh, I can, I can touch a steak and know what temperature it is, that might be true if you cook hundreds of steak a night. If you don't cook hundreds of steak a night, just use one of these, it's way easier. Let's get stuck into the first one. All right, pan searing a steak. So you ideally want to skillet something like this, cast iron, heavy, well seasoned. And then your steaks, this works really well with ribeye, or sirloin or any or filler, any kind of cut that's not massive like the tomahawk we're gonna do later. There's a lot of argument at the moment about whether you temper steaks or not, bring it up to temperature, room temperature. I can assure you most restaurants around the world cooking steaks of this size do not temper their steaks. They come out of the fridge and they go in the pan or onto the grill. And I do the same thing. However, if I'm doing a big cut of meat like a tomahawk, I do tend to temper it. Now I don't have any science to back up why I do it, I just do it out of habit. All right, I've had to turn the extraction on, so it's a bit loud. First things first, this pan's hot, get some oil in it. And don't be shy, add, add a good amount of oil. Season our steaks with salt. I'll talk about why I don't use pepper in a minute. And season it on all sides. All right, we can see that the oil's starting to smoke. Time to get these in. First things first, fat cap down. What that does is render that fat. You can see they're getting color already. Let's get the other side. Now, the flat face down. And we're gonna keep turning these. We're gonna turn them about every 30 seconds or so. And that way we get really nice, even charring. We're looking for a deep red, almost brown, nutty color on all the way on the outside. Now, like I was saying before, these steaks are dry aged. So this would have been further down the end, probably the first steak off the end. So it's drier. Once it's drier, it's gonna like caramelize uh, quicker. Now you can see here, I'm really happy with this color it's time to add some butter to the pan. So ice cold butter, a few cubes. And then to that, some rosemary. And I've got some garlic cloves here. So these garlic cloves aren't peeled. I'm just gonna smash them. And then they go. So we're gonna baste these steaks in that foamy butter and that's gonna really amplify the caramelization that we've got on the outside. Now I know someone's gonna come in the comments and say, that's not caramelization. I know it's technically not caramelization, but that's what we refer to it as. At this point, you really need to start making sure you check the temperatures, because they can go over really quickly. So this one here is about 34 degrees, and this one's a bit hotter, it's about 35 degrees. But this will all happen pretty quickly now. Keep turning, keep basting until you reach that internal temperature that you're looking for. So we've got a tray with a wire rack ready. And that's ready to rest them. I think we're just about there. Now you probably noticed I've turned the flame off and that's because this pan was getting too hot. All right, take them off. Let them rest. Now you can pour a bit extra of that butter over. We let those rest for a good five minutes, then we'll cut it open and see how I did. So there you go. Medium rare, no gray band on the outside. It's not running juices everywhere. Oh, and super tender. This has to be one of my favorite ways to cook a steak. But let's get on to grilling. All right, grilling steaks. Now this applies to whether 
you got a gas barbecue outside. Uh, anything with the grill lines in it. I've only got gas here. Charcoal is preferred, but we're indoors, so uh, we'll make do with what we've got. So I've got a couple of really nice Wagyu ribeyes. These are marble score six or seven, I think. So a really good marble score for, for steaks like this. I think once they get much higher, they become too rich. That's another video. But I wanted to really touch on seasoning. So. Uh, here in Australia, it's main, most people just season with salt and pepper. Personally, I don't use pepper either. I kind of prefer to put my pepper on after, freshly cracked. I don't really like how the pepper kind of burns a bit and, and uh, yeah, burns and taints a bit. So I'm, I'm a purist, I just use salt. I know in a lot of other parts of the world, especially through North America, people love to season their steaks with barbecue rubs and, and steak rubs. Um, by all means, this is the point that you do that as well. For me, personally, I don't think it needs it. Delicious really high quality meat, I think it just needs salt. So for the grilling, unlike the pan searing, we're gonna oil our steak first. So get a decent amount of oil on the outside, rub it over, and then we season with salt. And make sure you've got a salt, a clean hand for your salt, and your dirty hand for your steaks. So season with salt on one side. Generous as well, most of it will come off when you hit the grill anyway, so don't be afraid to whack it on there. And then the type of salt you use, we use what we call kind of table salt, still sea salt, so it's still evaporated from salt water, um, not the flaky finishing salt. Josh Wiseman gets angry when you use that. <laughs> Get a big problem. People keep using flaky salt to season stuff before it's cooked. Josh is completely right. In restaurants, you don't use that salt because it's really expensive. And this stuff's a lot finer, so you get more even coverage. If all you've got is flaky salt, there's nothing wrong with using that as well. Anyway, we've salted these. Time to get to them on the grill. So, Grills on maximum. Use your hand to find the hot spots. All grills have hot spots. This one's hot spots right here, and that's where we want to go first. Put your steak down. And like all the other steaks, temperatures are the same. We want medium rare. We're going to pull this off about 45, 46 degrees Celsius. So when grilling a steak, don't get caught up in having perfect bar lines. Unless you're doing competition barbecue where it matters. It's actually more important, I think, to get more bar lines on there. The more bar lines, the more contact you have with the grill, uh, means more flavor. More color, more flavor, pretty simple. And when flipping, make sure you move it to a different spot in the grill if you can. So these steaks, the ribeye, are my favorite steak to have at home. Because uh, of the fat content, they've got this nice nugget of fat in the middle, pretty good marbling. All right, so the truth is, I would like more color on these, but it came up to the temperature we're looking at, so we had to pull it off. So how do we get around that? Well, we need our grill hotter. So that grill was as hot as it can go. I'm not sure why it's not up to temperature today. It's been on for about two hours, so it should be more than up to temperature. But hey, it shouldn't be overcooked, but I would like a bit more color on the steak. So if you've got a grill at home, make sure it's cranked as hard as you can. Or if you're lucky enough to be able to do it over charcoal, then make sure you've got a really good bit of, of, uh, of coals before you start cooking your steak. Let's carve one of these open and see how it looks. This steak cuts like butter. Beautiful medium rare. How does it taste? Mm. <laughs> That's delicious. Honestly, you don't even really miss that extra, you know, caramelization in the mouth feel, but definitely visually it could look a bit, um, a bit more caramelized. Anyway, onto the last one, the reverse sear tomahawk. All right, time to reverse sear this tomahawk. And it's a good time to talk about seasoning. And now you've probably heard of a technique called dry brining a bit at the moment. So dry brining is when you season a steak uh, about 24 hours before and you'd put this on a wire rack and leave it in the fridge. What happens is the salt dissolves into a liquid and then basically penetrates the protein muscle. It's definitely a very worthwhile option. There's nothing wrong with doing it, but it's not the end of the world if you haven't done it. And I wouldn't recommend wet brining, which you see quite a lot in things like chicken. So be really generous with your salt. Uh, like I was saying before, I'm not a huge fan of cooking meat with pepper. I put it on after. Now off to the oven. So to cook this, it's better to cook it on a rack if you have it. And then we're going to get it in the oven. All right, so that oven is set to 110 Celsius, which is about 230 Fahrenheit on fan force. 
I know if you are from the kitchen world, you see that this is a like a combination oven. There's no steam set. This is just dry heat like you'd have at your home oven. So it's the same temperature. And I want to cook this to kind of medium rare. So we're going to pull this out at about 46 degrees Celsius. It'll continue cooking another maybe five degrees when it's resting, and then we're going to stir it off. All right, so we're about 45, 46 degrees Celsius in the center. We want to rest this for a good 10 to 15 minutes. Doesn't look super appealing, I know, it looks a bit gray, but that's what this next step's all about. So, to get the, the, the outside color, you can either do it in a pan like we're about to do here, or you can do it on the char grill like we did with the last steak. So this was in the oven at 110 degrees for about 35, 40 minutes in total. But that will vary on your oven, the fan speed, the temperature of the steak when it went in. So make sure you're looking at the internal temperature, not the time or the oven temperature. Now all we're doing here is getting this really hot and we're going to seal the outsides. If you're going to do it on a char grill, you know, oil this outside first. Because we're doing it in the skillet, we're going to oil the skillet first. Decent amount of oil. And we're actually going to use a burger press to help press this in a bit. Uh, you don't want to push heaps of pressure on because you'll lose a bit with too much moisture but just a little bit of pressure will help you get a more even color on the outside. It's also worth noting it's probably better to have a bigger skillet than I've got here but I didn't bring my big boy from home so uh, I was intending on using the grill but as we saw in that last video uh, for some reason that grill's not getting super hot today. So we'll get this pan ripping hot and then we'll get this tomahawk in there. So don't put heaps of weight on that. You just want the weight of the press itself, just holding it down nice and flat on the surface. If you don't have a burger smasher, another fry pan works just as well. And if for whatever reason you don't have a pan or a barbecue to seal this, you can crank your oven up as high as it will go and do it in there. But be warned, it will get smoky and your oven will need to be cleaned. <laughs> All right, that's only taken about four to five minutes and we've got good color, time to take it off. Now, because this is already rested when it came out of the oven, we don't need to wait. So, straight into carving. Mitchell, turn the extraction off, mate. Yes, Chef. That's better, I can hear myself think. So, this is a tomahawk. It's basically a ribeye, like we had in uh, the last video. To carve this, all we're going to do is carve down this bone here. And we'll leave that to one side. And then we're just going to slice it. Nice big slices. Ideally, you want to get some of this part here, which is the eye, some of this part here, which is the outer muscle, all in one piece. I like to take those first three bits off first, which is usually you've got a really large piece of fat in there. And we use that to prop the rest of it up. And then we can get some big slices. And you can see the benefit already of doing a reverse sear. This isn't bleeding out at all. And we've got a perfect medium rare and a really thick piece of meat all the way through. And this is when you do use flaky sea salt. Flaky salt is for finishing. There you go, reverse said tomahawk. How good does that look? I guess we better taste some. Even though I've been my own body weight in meat today. This is dry aged blue diamond. Oh, that's delicious. I love how consistently reverse searing cooks meat. It's incredible. Now, as I said at the start, there's no right or wrong way to cook steak. So leave in the comments how you cook your steak. I think with these three methods, you're going to bound to find something that uh, suits your budget, uh, your kitchen style, what you've got going on at home. Try one of them, try them all. Let me know how you go. If you enjoyed this video, then check this video out because you're going to need something to serve it with. These are my hero sides from Christmas, but they work just as well any other time of the year. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're not. Like if you took anything from this video and we'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace.